Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to use T-taps to tap into factory wiring, uh, maybe on your car. And what this does is it you can add aftermarket wiring to tap into the factory wiring while making very little damage to the actual wiring. You don't have to do any splicing and it creates minimal damage to the factory wiring. A lot of people, they don't want to cut and splice the factory wiring on their car, which I can totally understand that. And this takes very little effort and very little skill to add aftermarket things to your vehicle to tap into the 12 volt source. So what these things are is they're called T-taps and you can get them off Amazon. That's where I got this off Amazon. And uh, it came with 240 pieces, and it's meant for a few different size of wiring. So AWG, AUG, 12 AUG, 16 to 14 AUG, and 22 to 18 AUG. So typical wiring, probably a 12 volt, 12 volts car, which is pretty much the standard for any modern vehicle these days is 12 volts. You're probably going to end up using the 16 to 14 AUG. And all the connectors and things are color coded so i'll leave a link in the description for this on amazon you're also going to need some crimpers so these are some klein crimpers i just picked them up klein's pretty high quality typically i'll leave a link in my description for those uh, a pair of channel locks or pliers and then a pair of strippers so you can get all this on Amazon or your local Home Depot. You don't really need anything uh, super expensive if you're only doing this a few times a year. But I like to buy decent tools uh, because it's, I use these tools almost, almost every day. So this is the T-tap. So what it is, is there's little teeth on there go inside this wire and it breaks the insulation and these teeth grip around the wire. So then you just close this and it taps into the wire without having to do any kind of splice. So then you just take one of these male connectors and you crimp this onto the wire that you're running for like maybe your aftermarket reverse camera or radio and it just slides into there. And it looks like a T. And that's why it's called a T-tap. So the only damage it really does is this teeth right here, they slice through the insulation. So you don't really have to ever do any actual splicing. It just breaks the insulation very, very small slice. You can see how small that metal piece is. So if you tap into the wrong wire by accident or you end up changing your wiring or maybe trading in the car, all you really need to do is remove this off of it and remove all your wiring and you can just keep this on the factory wiring and keep it there. Or you can pop these off and then put a little bit of electric tape around that and you won't really uh, leave any uh, permanent damage. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. The first thing you need to do is find out what size the wiring is. Uh, on a lot of wiring, it'll show the size on this writing right here. Now, obviously, you guys probably can't see that, and it is very hard to see sometimes, but somewhere on the wire, it will say it. This one says 16 AUG. So, sometimes, uh, if it's a really short piece of wire, you might not have that writing on there, but if it's a long piece, it'll say it's somewhere. On a 12-volt car or truck, it's typically probably 16 to 14 gauge, or AUG, I'm sorry. So... You gotta th get the correct size on here. It'll show you the color coding system and the size. 
and the blue is good for 16 and 14. So you're going to rest the wire on this slot right here, the opposite side where the teeth are. And whenever you do this on the factory wiring, pretend this is the factory wiring on your car, you want to do it in a spot where if you somehow do damage the wiring, it can be spliced and fixed. So uh, very little chance you're actually going to completely cut the wire in half by accident. But you don't want to do it too close to a connector or like right here. Choose a spot where if it does get damaged, you can splice it back. So you just rest it in the opposite side where the teeth are. Click it in there and you'll need a pair of pliers. You can try to do it with your hand, but you're probably going to have a hard time. And there's a little slot that clicks into here. You just need to get it to click in there. And it's in there all the way. So now, the little teeth on this T-tap are on the conductors of this THHHN wiring. Very, very little damage. I mean, you can't even tell. So then what you do is you add your aftermarket wiring. So say so this is the power to your reverse camera that you're trying to add. You want to add a connector to it. So we're going to strip back the insulation. Leave about, I don't know, a quarter inch or so of wire. You can twist it to make it nice and stiff and straight. And you're going to slide it into this connector. It's probably too much conductor, so we're going to cut back a little bit. A little less. Slide it in there. So then you're going to take your crimpers. Now your crimpers are color-coded. I don't know if you guys can see the wiring size, but red, blue, and yellow, they all match up with the sizing on this. It's a pretty standard color scheme. So we're using a blue connector, so we're going to use the blue slot. Now these, you want to open up all the way. To open up all the way, you just got to squeeze them, and they open up. Nice and tight. So this could be the power wire to power up whatever aftermarket device you're adding, like a reverse camera. And this could be the positive of your factory wiring. So then this connector just plugs into here, seated in all the way. And that's a T-tap. And like I said, say you decide to trade the car in or you want to sell it to a buddy and you don't want to give them all the cool aftermarket stuff that you added. You just unplug that and leave it as is. You'll know, never have any problems like that. The biggest thing is you got to choose the right size for the wire. You definitely don't want to choose one that's too small. If you're having doubts, just choose the bigger one. And if that doesn't work, if you, for some reason you're not getting power, go the next size down. Because if you choose one that's too small, you could cut the wire in half by accident, and which can be fixed. It's not a big problem, big deal, but it can be fixed. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and add T-taps to this factory wiring on this 2012 Mazda 3. Right here, I have a aftermarket reverse camera, and we're gonna tap into a few of the wires on this factory harness, and it's actually the reverse camera uh, power, the uh, factory negative and the factory reverse uh, positive. So when the reverse lights turn on, it turns on 
that aftermarket camera. So this is a very small wire going to the reverse camera. Uh, it looks like a maybe a 20 gauge, 22 gauge. So with my T-taps, I need this connector, it's red. So we're gonna add one of these to each of the wires using the crimpers that I have shown you in the video. And then we're gonna tap into the factory wiring over here. And that looks like, I don't know, 14 to 16 gauge. And that needs to be blue, a blue tap. So first thing we're gonna do is just add these connectors, make sure they fit right with it. Slide the wire into the slot. All right, so I got both of them on. I wasted a few because the wire kept falling out. So whenever you got them crimped on, you kind of got to give them a tug, make sure they don't come out. This wire is very, very small. So um, it's a little challenging to get it to stay in there, but I finally did. So that's what it's going to look like whenever you have the connectors on. So next, I'm going to put those taps on this black wire. And if you watch my video about how to install a reverse camera on a 2012 Mazda 3, these are the wires you're going to use. This is your negative, and then this white right here is your positive for a reverse camera. So we're going to put the tap somewhere back here, not too close to this connector. That way if the wire gets damaged, I still have plenty of room to repair it. I took off some of the tape to get that far back. All right, got that first one on. That's my positive. So that'll be the red wire clicks onto that one. Got them on there. So now you're just going to want to plug these in to the end of those taps.
and that's how it should look. So now we're just going to confirm that everything's working. And then I'll clean up the wiring a little bit. All right, so we plugged into the reverse lights. So we want to make sure the reverse lights are still working. And then we want to confirm that the reverse camera is working now. So we just put it in reverse. We got a reverse camera now. And we got reverse lights. So we know that we're good now. Got my heater in here. It's a pretty cold day here in the Midwest. So now all we got to do is just clean up that insulation job a little bit. Just what I do is just rewrap this in electrical tape and put your car back together and you're good. So that's what it looks like whenever I was done. I just taped that around that way. This can't get yanked on somehow. Click this back into the spot. It looks pretty darn good. All right, so that's a brief video of how do you do T-taps. Like I said, you can get this off of Amazon. I'll leave it in a link down below in the video description. I think this was like $12 and some change. So I really hope this helps. Uh, like I said, this will be great for adding aftermarket things to your vehicle. You just got to find a positive and negative wire. If you can't find the negative wire, you can just go off the grounding of the vehicle. You just got to find a positive wire then. So if you like this video, please like the video. Also, please subscribe. Uh, I'm going to do more videos like this in the future uh, about tools and electronics and how to do certain things with electronics. And uh, if you like this video, uh, or if you have any comments, just please uh, leave it the leave a comment below the video and tell me what you guys think. And I really hope you guys subscribe. Thanks for watching.